uh, on this video, I will show you the process I take uh, to do this painting. Uh, this is gonna be a thematic painting uh, about zombies uh, using the new stencils from multi-layer stencils. Uh, I'm gonna start out by by doing the zombie portrait uh, using the size 2 stencil. As you can see I have been playing around with it. It's dirty already. That's gonna be a full color portrait. Uh, then I'm gonna be also using the this is the dirt texture and this is the size one. I'm gonna be using these hands looks like kinda zombies coming out of the graves. Uh, that's size one. And I also use this stencil uh, which is uh, kind of like a graveyard background stencil and together with those I'm gonna be using uh, two zombie stencils which are which are smaller those are gonna be this zombie which is size one and then this zombie uh, with the broken legs broken broken wrists uh, this one is also size one. So let's get started with the uh, zombie portrait, which is going to be full color, and it's going to be most of the video uh, because I will show you the process which I use uh, to create a full color uh, painting using the stencil. And you can use some uh, a similar process for all the other stencils. Uh, this is the reference image I will be using. Uh, this can be found on the product description of multilayerstencils.com for uh, for this design. Uh, you can either download it and print it, or you can just use it online, or you can just have a digital copy on your computer or your phone. So. Uh, I'm gonna get started uh, painting this zombie. I'm just gonna paint it on this plate. Uh, what I did on this plate is I went ahead and prepared it uh, using 400 and then I sprayed uh, Createx Wicked Opaque White. Although the plate is white, I like to use my own white uh, because if I need to make any corrections I can use the the same white and it's not gonna be a huge color change so I like doing it that way uh, I'm gonna mix a dark color um, I'm gonna start I'm gonna be using illustration colors and I'll be using black blue uh, maybe some red and some yellow to uh, to make this blue a little bit, uh, this black a, a bit cool, so it does, so it's not, uh, it's not such a dead black. Um, once I have mixed that, I'll come back to this. I'm just going to uh, to spray the positioning marks because I'm going to be lifting it up and down quite a few times until I get the image to where I need it to be. So I'm just putting tape so I can spray the the excess. And once I have the tape I can spray the positioning marks and that that should uh, help me be able to remove the stencil and put it back in place. Just check, make sure I got them. So I'm just gonna do a light coat on the on the whole image, just so I can have something there and 
and keep painting. You might not be able to see this, but all I'm doing is putting a light coat like this. To have some detail down. This color, this color is reduced. That means that uh, it's not gonna cover too good, and that's exactly what I want. I'm using transparent colors. I'm using transparent colors so it allows me to layer multiple passes. I'm just gonna hold down the stencil on one side and that's what I'm getting. Uh, so you can see the the result is very light and what we want to do now is look at the reference and since I'm already having the black color on my on my airbrush I want to spray some of the darker areas like up here for example the ear the eyes uh, somewhere down here I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna spray all those darker areas Make sure to keep referring back and forth so you are always aware what's going on on your painting. And I can see my color is not covering enough. So what I will do is I'll add uh, more black. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try making this color more opaque uh, so that it covers better. Okay, I got more black on my airbrush. Again. Don't forget to be checking your values. Uh, meaning, uh, make sure how dark the image is getting. You see, if you wanted to do a monochromatic painting, this would be good enough. Maybe you just need to uh, make it darker. Uh, but since we, we need to add color, when we add more color, it's going to darken some of those areas. Um, so I'm going to stop at this point with, uh, with this color. And I'm going to move on into the red areas. Let me show you the let me show you the reference uh, the reference picture uh, shows that there is there is red here under the neck uh, under the chin uh, by the neck and shoulder area then there is red around his mouth uh, a little bit around his eyes and up here on the left side of his uh, of his head uh, so we're gonna mix a red color kind of like a red uh, a blood red and uh, I'll spray it uh, wherever I see that it needs uh, but I want to keep the stencil in place uh, because uh, I'm gonna need to spray the red through the stencil there are some areas that need to be sprayed through the stencil, uh, those parts are usually the darkest when whenever you're using 
a uh, a positive stencil in this like in this case so I'll go ahead and start mixing that color I'll show you once it's ready okay so I've gone ahead and I mixed a red color um, I mixed this color using scarlet red uh, blue violet and uh, a bit of brown and uh, also uh, a bit of orange so uh, this color is transparent remember uh, all my colors here are transparent for this painting and this color might be a bit too light so I'm gonna have to layer it many times to get a good saturation of color but at the same time I want you to keep in mind that we we are also gonna be uh, we're gonna keep darkening some areas with this color that we already have down and whenever we have red already here and we keep adding more black uh, so we we're gonna end up creating uh, creating multiple shades of this color so uh, let's keep moving ahead and remember to work your areas lightly you don't want to just flood the stencil with paint because you're gonna uh, you're gonna end up running your paint So let's check what we're getting. See at this point the color looks very washed out. But that's okay. Uh, let's just keep moving ahead. I want to saturate this area as much as I can. Uh, now I'm gonna move to the area in the mouth and down here on the shoulder and we are building these colors little by little slowly This mouth looks very disgusting. So, at this point, that's what we're getting. And remember, I'm looking at my reference almost constantly.
definitely need to intensify all this color. Let's come up here also. Okay. It seems like I've run out of paint. I should have mixed more paint, but let's see what I got. Um, that is good enough for now. See, I also went on the shirt. It's a bit of blood. Once we um, paint that area, it would also look better. It will kill some of that red. Um, so at this point, um, I'm gonna darken, I'm gonna keep darkening the image with the original black I was using. And again, it's always, uh, it's always better to paint slower so you don't flood the stencil, uh, you'll get cleaner results. And by working slow, you're going to prevent yourself having to start over again. You might find that uh, the first time you do this, it can be uh, a bit difficult, especially if you're not familiar with matching colors. But uh, don't give up, just keep trying it more and more. Uh, you'll get the hang of it. Now that we are at this point, um, I will make a color for the skin. For that color, it seems to be kind of like a, a greenish skin, skin color. Um, so I'll go ahead and mix that. And uh, it would also be a transparent color. So I'll come back here when it's ready. So let's take a look at the color I got for the skin. Um, using burnt umber, moss green, and cerulean blue, uh, I mixed this color. If I comp uh, fully saturate it, it would be kind of like a green brown uh, but for the painting uh, I also added a lot of reducer to this color so all I'm doing is a light mist uh, I don't know if you can see that uh, let's try it on let's try it on the painting uh, this is the reference image and there you can see the color so together with some of that red uh, we're gonna get variations of colors so uh, let's shoot it and see what happens let's start it down here on the neck uh, it's not too far, it's not too far off. You don't want to spray 
evenly throughout the whole thing. Seems like the teeth also have some of that yellow. I put some on the chin also. And it's coming along. There is overspray up here. Uh, but no problem, uh, afterwards I'm going to come with the opaque color and, and I'm going to kind of fade this a little bit into the head of the zombie. So nothing to worry about there. So now I'm going to place the stencil back. And I'm just going to spray through the stencil now. I don't want to spray too much. I want to make sure I'm able to see if something's not going right. You should be able to uh, catch it. So always be cautious whenever you're spraying. Uh, whenever you put the stencil back, remember you only shoot in the, the dark areas. But I don't want to overshoot it also. Okay, there we are right now. And I'm gonna leave it at this point. I'm gonna leave it there. And I'm gonna come back and keep working on the shadows. And this time, I'm gonna make my, my black even darker. But this, this time I'm gonna make my black even darker. So now I'm using a, uh, the dark color, which is uh, kind of like a blue-green. It's a black, uh, which looks kind of like a really dark blue-green. Uh, I'm going to keep darkening everything this time. And after that, we might do some uh, freehand just to darken even further. So I'm looking at the reference and I'm looking where the darker areas are. I want to check my color C. and always keep track how dark things are getting.
So from here, uh, I'll take it, I'll darken it even even more, uh, but this time I'll do a freehand, just so I can get much, much darker. And the areas I wanna darken only because uh, I wanted to blend in uh, properly with the background. So I will come back with more red this time and uh, we're gonna intensify the color whatever it needs to be red. So now that I got some red on the airbrush um, we're gonna intensify the color on the blood and this time I mix my red since I ran out of, of red I mix my red a bit more more vibrant uh, it's kind of like an orange all, all I used was uh, Scarlet Red and um, Burnt Umber. Those are the only two colors I use. I'm gonna place the stencil back in place and I'm gonna spray that and see how it's looking. See what I'm getting. That's good. just intensifying the color as much as I want I'm looking at the areas where I'm spraying
I need to darken some areas um, by the teeth so for that I'm gonna keep using the stencil So I'm back with the red and I'm gonna increase the saturation in the blood by the teeth. I don't wanna hit everywhere, just some spots.
Okay, so I think the red is enough over here. I think the red is enough. Um, so now we're gonna we're gonna mix some blue for the shirt, uh, for the eyes, and also to uh, to do some of the shadows. There's a small amount of blue in the face also. So um, I'll get that blue and uh, we keep shooting. So I have gone ahead and mix a blue color for the shirt and for some areas on the face to give it that cool look. Um, I mix this color using Cerulean blue, burnt umber, and scarlet red. Here you can see how that color looks. It's a kind of dull down blue. And um, I'm just gonna add some color to the shirt. I want to keep the shirt looking kind of um, fogged out so it, it doesn't look so uh, sharp. I want the color to be uh, not so saturated. I want the chroma to stay low. There we go. And the other side, I can add a little bit of this color also, but I don't want to get just a little, just a little impression that there is a shirt. Um, this color, as you can see here, it's very, um, it's very transparent but it's still too strong and I want this color to be a bit more uh, weak because I'm gonna add it to the face and if I'm not careful the way it is I'm gonna make the, the color way too blue really quick so what I'll do is I'll drop some of what I have on the cup and add more reducer uh, that way the, the paint will become more transparent another option will be to add a transparent base to the paint Okay, so I'll show you here how weak this color is. Uh, now it's allowing me to fill the color slower. Um, so let me grab the reference image. So I see a bit of blue around the eyes and some of the shadows uh, seem to have some of that blue So I'll be careful adding some color to that Somewhere here on the neck Some of those shadows Might be hard to see what I'm putting the color, uh, but it will definitely make a difference. And um, 
it's hard to see the difference, but that's exactly what we want. The, the amount of blue on the painting is so less that if you're not if we're not careful, uh, we're gonna overshoot it. So that's looking much better. Um, I'll reduce the air pressure. I'll reduce the air pressure and I'm going to shoot only for the eyes. Hopefully the color will show up. See that it's only a small amount of blue and uh, it does make a difference. So um, uh, these transparent colors show up only because we still have some of the white showing through. Uh, see that's what we're working with. Um, so now what I want to do is I want to add a bit more of this uh, kind of green brown that I, I was using before just to give some more color to the skin um, but only a little touch not too much and I want to be careful what I'm shooting. I'm looking at the reference image. I see there's more of this color up here. It's, it's kind of like splotchy on areas. So I don't want to go, I don't want to go evenly on the whole thing. Just some areas, give it a little touch. So now there is a combination of uh, on the on the portrait we have basically about four or five colors. We have the dark black that we started with. Uh, we have this blue. Uh, we have the red that is three colors, and then the the green brown that I'm using for the skin. So four colors to do this portrait. Um, if you wanna, of course, if you wanna put more time, uh, you can definitely, uh, you know, make it perfectly photorealistic. Uh, what I'm trying to show in this video is most about uh, kind of like the process that you go about for for doing these kind of paintings. Um, of course, you can use this and and uh, combine it with other techniques. For example, uh, erasing some areas. Uh, bringing back some highlights, uh, you can do that. Uh, but at this point, all I'm doing is adding paint and protecting my highlights. Um, I want to make it as, as close to the reference as possible, but at the same time, I don't want to spend too much time. 
and um, I think we got something that is very close to the uh, reference image there would always be some spots that we can always re uh, come back and retouch but uh, so far it's looking good and uh, for the next part of the video uh, we will be doing the background and we will we will uh, paint some kind of border around it kind of like uh, making this a uh, small window so that you can see the painting through the window and making the background which is gonna be much faster we're not gonna put so much work into it but it will definitely make the painting uh, a lot more a lot more uh, rich with details and, and uh, really attractive uh, so when people look at it, um, there's a lot of elements that they can look and it would really be an eye candy to look at. So 